Hi everybody, Jeremy here, welcome back to the channel. Something I'm often asked is, how do you manage your money? Today I'm talking about six key goals and habits that you should have to help build your wealth. Get an emergency fund. Murphy's Law says if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. And the best defense against this is getting some distance between you and Murphy. And by distance, I mean cash. Wiringly, some data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics showed that one in four people couldn't come up with $2,000 in the space of a week in the event of an emergency. In a similar fashion, a survey of 10,000 Australians showed that 38% of them had less than $5,000 in the bank. That's a lot of people living their lives very close to the edge. And this is why having an emergency fund is so important. Something at some point is gonna go wrong. And if you're not prepared for it, it could financially cripple you. As an initial rule, your starter emergency fund should be around about $2,000 and you need to do everything in your power to get this money as fast as possible. Take the easy wins first. Look around your house for unused items that you'd be willing to sell. Then chuck them up on Facebook Marketplace, eBay or wherever and sell them. And trust me, you'll look at some things and go, that's total rubbish, but people will buy it. I was once about to throw out an old push mower that I thought was worth absolutely nothing and some bloke bought it off me for more than I paid for it. If you can't do that, try living super cheap for a few months. Rent out the kids, sell the dog, do whatever you need to do to get that cash. And the best way to treat an emergency fund is to pretend that you don't even have it. Open an account with a bank that you don't presently bank with. Chuck the money in there. And then only ever touch it if you're ever in a real emergency. Remember, an emergency isn't to buy tickets to Coachella. This money is here to save your butt if something goes wrong. Avoid high interest debt. Stay away from things like credit cards unless you can pay off the balance in full each month. According to WeMoney, Australians have an average credit card debt of $1,500, with an average interest rate of 20%. Now, I don't care how good a rewards program your credit card has. You're not coming out ahead if you're paying interest rates as high as that. By the same token, you've got to avoid taking out loans on depreciating assets like new cars. The second you drive that thing off the lot, you're losing value. You're way better off in the long run buying a good quality used vehicle. Same goes with taking high interest personal loans or anything of that nature. All these things do is eat away at money that could be used in other ways. You can't reach financial freedom or grow your wealth if all of your money goes to repayments. Now the best course of action is to not make mistakes like this in the first place. But sometimes stuff happens. So if you're in this boat, do everything in your power to get rid of these debts. Work an extra job, get a side hustle, live well below your means. Once you don't have these chains around your feet, you're gonna be able to get some serious work done. Pay yourself first. Now this has to be one of the most underrated tips, but you need money to make money, and that means you need savings. Get yourself into good financial habits by paying yourself a small percentage of your wage every time you earn a paycheck. And paying yourself needs to be taken as seriously as paying the rent or paying your mortgage. It's a non-negotiable item. Start small if you need to. If you can only afford 20 bucks a week, start with 20 bucks. What's important is that you ingrain this habit, and as you earn more and more money, you're able to put more and more away. And this means you have money behind you to buy big ticket items, and you're not gonna have to rely on debt to fuel your lifestyle. Now it's time to up our insurance policy and build our emergency fund to three to six of months worth of living expenses. Now if you're likely to have more financial needs than the average person, you should be going more towards that six month end of the scale. But as a minimum, always make sure you're maintaining three months worth. And the real power of a fully funded emergency fund is there's not a lot of problems that can't be solved by throwing a pile of cash at it. Once you've saved it once, you shouldn't need to save it again. It'll help you sleep a bit easier. All right guys, now we have a really solid foundation. It's time for the fun stuff. We're gonna start investing. Now you can't work 24 seven, but guess what? Your money can. And that's what we're gonna start doing right here. Now I get it, when you're young, investing sounds really, really boring. But the sooner you start, the more work and heavy lifting your money's gonna do. Now, if you invested $100 a week at an average return of 10%, in 22 years, you'd have about $370,000. In 32 years, you'd have just over a million dollars. And in 42 years, you'd have over 2.8 million. Now, what we just looked at was the power of time and compound interest. In fact, the younger you are, the more your money's worth. Assuming a 2% inflation rate, a dollar at age 20 is actually worth $22 at age 62. To put that into context, the $5 you're blowing per day on coffee is actually worth about 100 bucks. And that's why I'm so passionate about telling people about compound interest and investing. The sooner you start, the less work you have to do and the more financial freedom you're gonna have as you get older. 
And if you're just starting out investing, make sure you maximize things like your retirement accounts, super, 401ks, etc. Because these have huge tax advantages. Have financial goals. It's all well and good to have a plan and to be saving money and investing. But you need to have a reason why or you're just not going to keep at this long term. Are you sick of living paycheck to paycheck? Do you want a better life for your family? Or are you after a shiny Lambo? Your why really doesn't matter. What's important is having one because that's going to help you stay consistent to this process over the long term. And it's the small consistent actions over the long term that build real wealth. And last but not least guys, make sure you have some fun money. You genuinely need to enjoy life and it's all about balance. Saving and investing money is fantastic but you've got to have fun as well. There needs to be a yin and yang to your finances. But just like anything, the key is balance. A little bit of takeaway from time to time is fantastic, but eating it every night will absolutely destroy you. Your finances are no different. You need to be able to splurge a little bit and have a little bit of fun, because otherwise, what's the point in doing this? Just make sure you keep it balanced and don't YOLO too hard. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please like the video. It really does help me out, and I greatly appreciate it. Till next time, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.